More political violence out west as President Trump supporters and Antifa clashed at a Patriot prayer rally in Portland. Here's part of it. A couple cops were injured, by the way, by those people in masks. Victor Davis Hansen is a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution and a professor at Cal State University Fresno, and he joins us tonight. Professor Hansen, so you've seen a pretty notable surge in violence from the left in the past year. Is it organic, is there a, or is there a point to it? Well, I think they function in a void. The Democratic Party and the progressive movement right now doesn't have an agenda. They don't, I mean, you can't really run on open border, more open borders or more regulations or less gas and oil production or 1.6% GDP growth. And then that void, we've got an Antifa street thuggery that's wagging the Democratic Party. And uh, there's sort of a Robespierre or a whiff of Mao in this because we started with Obama in 2008 as a Democrat and then we went to liberalism, now progressivism, and now Antifa is the engine that's driving things. And if they convince, I guess if they can convince the Democratic Party in 2018 that there's a, a fascist under every American bed in every American bedroom, they can gen up hysteria because there's very few I mean everybody hates supremacists they're an odious group and they're not very right. numerous or influential but if you can convince them in 1950 style that they're everywhere then maybe you can gin up identity politics and get the vote out but uh, there's a kind of a history to this Tucker in the sense that we we can condemn Noriega or Pinochet but when we get into Hugo Chavez on the left or we get into Castro or Shea, and especially Stalin and Mao, the two greatest mass murderers of the 20th century, then we say, well, you know what? They're, they broke a few eggs to make an omelet, or they had to use certain means because their exalted right. ends of equality were so much better than the alternative. So we haven't had that progressive condemnation of violence, and we're seeing that the fruits of that with Antifa. No, and in fact, you've, you've seen the left make apologies for political violence for generations, as with Castro, who put AIDS patients in concentration camps, but that was okay because he was doing it for all the right reasons. Um, yeah, so right. What's, they're, they're useful idiots, I think. What's the end game here, though? I mean, if this is I think the end game is to cause to such be. disruption and chaos that in lieu of an agenda, because they don't have an alternate agenda that's going to appeal to the blue wall states, they can say, you're people are dying in Chicago or you're not getting uh, enough support because there's Confederate statues in Charlottesville. So they can address the misdemeanor that's irrelevant because they can't do anything about the felony. And they want to get so much, they want to convince the American people that the greatest issue facing us is not 1.6 economic growth under Obama or joblessness right. or North Korea, but it's a Clan, Klansmen or of a, a white supremacist everywhere, and they're not there, so that they now they're turning on anti Sharia demonstrators. And think of that logic an anti fascist organization is mad at people protest, protesting the fascist elements of Sharia law where they stone adulteresses and go after kill gays. So it's sort of Robespierre all over again. The authoritarians always find each other in the end, I think. Professor, they thank do. you for your perspective, as always. Good to see you. Thank, thank you, Tucker.